Welcome back. We're going to model the linkage arm. Remember, there's always more than one way to do something, and this is just an approach that I'm going to take. So I've got the linkage arm set up, and this is the piece that connects the two wheels, so that kind of work in unison, and it slips over this little tab right here, okay, and until it, um, the back of it interferes or mates up with that face. So I'm actually going to start sketching on that face, and I'm going to use the wheels um, in the part studio already as as reference for me, instead of having to like necessarily go and dimension everything. Okay, so I'm going to start a new sketch right on this face. I'm going to press N, so I'm normal to it. Now, I do remember and went back and looked that this diameter right here was um, an eighth of an inch, or 0.125, and the hole on the linkage arm is slightly bigger. It's 0.128. So instead of making a circle that is explicitly 0.128, okay, I'm going to use the offset tool right here, okay, and I'm going to offset this geometry, okay, so it's going to make a circle that basically references that and is going to be a defined amount bigger. And the amount bigger it's going to be, um, because it's adding to both sides, it needs to be half the difference. So the difference between 0.128 and 0.125 is 0 0.003. So half of 0 0.003 is 0 0.0015. So it's just a hair hair bigger, right? It's supposed to slip on, but just gives it the ability to, you know, be a clearance fit. Okay, the larger circle, I am gonna go ahead and um, let, let's see, it's 0.1875. Uh, what was the outside of that piece of the wheel? One, two, five. Yeah, that's smaller. Okay, so this is going to be um, point one eight seven five times two. I got the whole circle here instead of the diameter. Okay, so that is needed. Um, over here as well. So instead of recreating and doing those exact same steps, I can use the pattern tool. Right here I'm going to use a linear pattern. Alright, and I'm going to select the things to get patterned, which is this and that circle. And I don't know if you can tell, in light blue do you see these construction lines showing up? So it's saying, um, by default, how about the distance for my pattern to be one inch and to have three of them. Right now they're counting the original, so one, two, three. So you see those show up. So I only want two, the original plus one more. So I'm going to double click on that and change that to a two. And then the distance right here, I'm going to double click on that. And I want the distance from here to here, which I think is 4.5. Oh, 3.5, sorry. So I'm going to go edit it again. This is 3.5 to get to right there. Okay. So, and I'm not going to hit the green check because I'm still sketching, but that gets that, okay? So notice the mouth has the, this little cursor shows left click the mouse button to accept that. Did it. Okay, the next thing I have to do is I need to connect, let me get back, where's my linkage arm? There you go. Okay, connect these bigger circles with basically, you know, these two parallel lines. In essence, I'm going to use a rectangle. Um, but I want it to be centered on those holes, so I'm going to go get the rectangle tool. And I'm going to get a coincident constraint as I click. So that, that corner is on that rec or circle. And then I'm going to come all the way over here. And this is the two-point rectangle, so the diagonal one. I also want that to connect there to that circle. Okay. Now, I want this point also to be on the circle. So I'm going to use my coincident constraint and say that point must be on the circle. And when I do that, I believe it automatically centers it up. If I try to drag this and move it, since both of those have to be on the circle, notice how it's um, you know, moving such that this construction line stays in the middle. Okay, my overall dimension height from that other drawing was 0.25. I'll go back and show that. That's this distance right here. This overall length, I don't have to worry about. It's It was already figured out when I patterned, basically. Um, everything looks black. 
So I think we're good. I can accept my sketch and then do my extrusion. So I'm going to choose okay that plus let's see I got to get all these little regions. I didn't if I had trimmed that might have made it easier to select in one little operation. Okay, looks like I got everything. I'm going to turn it sideways so I can kind of see. Looks like the face is all continuous, no little missing voids, and the distance of this is an eighth of an inch. Hitting tab allows me to preview. It should be flush right there on the end, and that's it, except, and that is the linkage arm. Now we can mirror it across if we want to do the other one, so I could hit mirror, the linkage arm, it is going to be a new part. The mirror plane is going to be this mid plane I still have visible. And there you go. Accept that. Let's go ahead and create uh, a name for these so I can rename. Oop, that's actually the wrong one. Sorry, part 13. Rename. No. Yeah, I don't know why the axle keeps highlighting, but there you go. Linkage arm, and I, this one could be linkage arm two. I need to go do the same thing with, with the wheels and axle pegs, etc. Um, and then if I want to change the color, change the color of them. So there you go. So we are really close. We still have to do the little linkage peg to hold the linkage arm on and the cow catcher. And I think we're almost done.